interesting what, what Lee said, because I, in, I can't conjure up in my mind how many millions of people must have seen Star Wars and now the Empire Strikes Back. Right. How many millions would you imagine around the world? Well, it's, it's a thing that uh, I don't really like to think about. You know, doing a television show like this, uh, I don't really ponder the numbers. I think you try and do your best if you're on stage for 100 people or telling a joke in your living room for just your mother and her friends. There has to be somebody around that deals in uh, trivia who must have figured out, let's see, the picture grows this much. That means breaking it down, they charge this much of tickets. So many million people saw I'm sure, it. I'm sure they have. But again, it's a, it's a funny thing because people seem to... I've just come off a worldwide tour. I think I'm still on Hong Kong time. Taking you where? Tell, tell oh. me where you were in the world. Well, this time was different than the first one. Most of the time we would go to, like, London, and journalists from Italy and Germany would come there. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, it's interesting, the different questions they ask you from different countries. But a lot of the people are really interested in the money aspect oh, because they're told course. it's the highest grossing film of all time. And uh, Is it now still number one, Star Wars? As we speak. By yeah. a large margin. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, uh, maybe an easier way is uh, how many languages do you think the film is in? It's translated into nearly every language there is now they're even Good God. they're they're dubbing one into uh swahili <laughs> i've uh, never seen you love to see that print? i would love to <laughs> they're working actually they're working on a print right now where uh you can sit in the they have it keyed to all like 11 major languages and you can sit at the dial and punch which language the movie will immediately switch oh so darth vader gosh. will be speaking japanese where is, this, where is this happening this is just like a present to the actors from george we're, we're going to get a screening of it so we because everyone's been complaining that they want to hear the foreign i understand language. he is unlike all the others who do what he does he does he and francis ford coppola kind of do their own thing and have their but own no, you're constantly meeting people that do things in their own way sam fuller is an excellent example yeah. frankly when i read the screenplay to big red tell, one I, excuse me tell I, who sam fuller Samuel Fuller wrote and directed The Big Red One. I read the script and I said, this thing's terrific. But uh, I had great reservations because uh, I was looking for uh, a role that would show me in a situation that would broaden the spectrum of roles that I could get. I mean, yeah. I, the tendency is for people to remember, you know, they call me an overnight success, but that was like one of the longest nights of my life. It was 10 years. <laughs> and uh, always, right. always. Everybody's so, overnight success. So, you know, success. after all the work, uh, people tend to think of you as that first kid that you saw, golly, they followed us. And my job was to find something that really showed that I have some versatility. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about working with this man, because, and I'm, I'm not saying this, but, just sitting there doing that thing with him at the opening of the show, I, I say to myself, I can't, because he's larger than life and the image of this guy, he well, can't intimidate you, right? Well, he has sort of passed into American folklore. His face will be on Mount Rushmore someday. If you're a movie buff... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have to be a big mountain to carve that face. <laughs> but, uh, no, really, if you're a movie buff at all, you've seen him, and he's really become along with John Wayne. An institution. And, right. So I figured, gee, I had enough problems with robots, I don't want to be eaten alive by this guy. <laughs> so you did have some apprehension. Sure I did, but, uh, you know... <laughs> and how'd you break? How'd you... I went in and I met Sam Fuller. I thought the least I could do was tell him, not that I didn't want to do the movie because I didn't like the screenplay, it's just that there were... I was looking for a play to do. Maybe do a play uh, in New York. Yeah. And about 90 seconds... After I walked through the office, I knew I was going to be along for the journey. Uh, he's a, a human dynamo. I mean, he acted out the entire invasion of Normandy Beach in an office over at Lorimar, which I thought was phenomenal. No, really, the Germans, the Americans, all the bombs, the boats, all the sound effects. Were you there, Lee, for that? No, I was day? sitting with him in a restaurant in Munich when he was telling me about oh, it. I see. And this is a very fine old German restaurant in Munich, and he shot 6,000 krauts. He shot everybody in the restaurant, he shot 17 times. <laughs> and uh, they were all saying, Was is los? You know? <laughs> <laughs> See, kid, he says, then you get up and you go, oh, stick that knife in him and you know that. <laughs> very gentle man. This, this nice, gentle human being we're talking about is going to be here in person tomorrow. Right. 
Have you met him yet? No, I haven't. Oh, well, mm-hmm. How long is your show? <laughs> 90 minutes. Oh, that'll give him time. <laughs> yeah, that's World War II and World War I. That's, that's part right. One. That's right. What is this man like with fans? Because I know he's recognized. I mean, Lee's got a face. Everybody in the world knows that face. Well, that was... Now, see, this was all new to me. Uh, all of a sudden, walking out and being part of, of, you know, the people's memory banks, they say. Star Wars. See, I'm doing that now too, Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Lee gets it everywhere he goes. I mean, there's some. No, 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 no. This is all fictitious. This is all I, fictitious. I, I, we stay in the Lee. same I'm hotel. You, Lee. No, I, no, wait a minute. With this... No, no, because, you know, everybody just walks by and they kind of give me a hand. Yeah, yeah. Wave. But he couldn't spend a, a night, you know, uh, sleep at all in these hotels because everybody was running up and wanting to know if RD2 f- was there. Are you dumb too? Boom, boom. And they're knocking on his door. <laughs> it's true. No. There, we were sitting in, the heat off sitting in a me. pizza restaurant in Israel, and uh, a pizza oh. restaurant in Israel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, it's it's a it's a class act, but we were <laughs> we were sitting there having a pizza, and some uh, gentleman with a camera around his neck came up and said in broken English, "Oh, Mr. Marvin, I like you so very much. I like you in Paint Your Wagon when you sang. I was boring under a wandering star." <laughs> boring. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't correct him, did you? <laughs> he was right. How could I do? <laughs> you're caught, you're caught. We have a scene from the big red one. Uh, it's between uh, you, Mark, and, and Lee. So can you kind of set it up for us? It's the Bangalore Relay. It's, but the thing is that's great about the big red one is it's, it's just the antithesis to Star Wars. There's no heroics. It's staying alive in a war. It doesn't matter which war. And it's, and it's, it's honest. The it, I think very so. Honest. I think so. So this could be any beach in any war and just yeah. something that happens to a soldier who gets cold feet. Okay, roll it, Artie, please. The big red one. Next! 